Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. Um, I'm in Ealing, London. Behind me is Sid James's house. So Sid James uh, is uh, best known for being a comedian who was a prominent figure in um, mid 20th century Britain, um, particularly started the Carry On films. Well, um, Sid James was born far, far from these shores in Johannesburg, South Africa. He grew up in the Hillbrow area of Johannesburg. So they were known as Hillbrovniks, people who lived there. Um, he was of uh, Eastern European Jewish uh, ancestry. His name was actually Solomon Cohen initially, but he later um, uh, assumed the name Sid James. Um, so uh, his family didn't have that much money. He left school in his mid-teens, which was typical. He'd been born in, in, in 1913. So he was a teenager in the time of the Great Depression. Uh, and he became a hairdresser. Now that wasn't good enough for him as he later liked to project this, this uh, macho image and claimed to be a boxer, uh, been a diamond cutter. There was a big diamond trade in Johannesburg because um, there were a lot of diamonds in, in, in South Africa. And uh, what else? Oh, that he taught people to dance and so on. I'm not sure it was that much of a hoofer. Anyway, so he married um, a, a Jewess from a wealthy family and her father bought him a, um, a hairdressing studio. And so that's how he made his living for a while. Uh, he had four children, he married thrice. I don't remember the name of any, any of his wives. And uh, he was uh, an incorrigible womanizer. But um, so uh, Sir James got into acting by the late 1930s, having thrown up his uh, hairdressing uh, business. So he was a scabrous, rapscallion, lascivious, and the, the parts he played were very true to life. So he was, he was, he was typecast um, as someone who was um, cunning, really, out for himself. A lovable rogue. Uh, he joined the South African Army in, in the Second World War and uh, he rose to be a, a sergeant in it. He got to know Joe Slovo, who was also in the Springbok Division. Um, I'm not quite sure where he served. Oh, he was an all-volunteer army and it was a white-only army, even though the majority of South African people are black, um, because they already had uh, exclusionary policies towards the black majority at the time and the white government didn't want to put guns in the hands of uh, the indigenous people of South Africa lest they turn them on the whites. So, um, obviously he's very against Nazism, which was slaughtering his co-religionists in uh, Eastern Europe. Anyway, he returned to South Africa after the war, and he was given a payoff by the army when he was demobilized, and he immediately left his uh, native country and uh, embarked on a ship for the United Kingdom. So he set foot here for the first time, and he decided he was going to be an actor. So it was a bold move, because it wasn't guaranteed to make anything. And, you know, he might have been uh, doing a very menial job. But anyway, by, by grit and determination, he made a success of himself. He had no contacts here. And it's a very bitchy world theatre. It's all about who you know. So he got into repertory theatre. You're in a theatre company and then you learn various plays off by heart. And you go around the country performing them. You've got a wide repertoire, why it's called repertory. But eventually he got into films, was in the Lavender Hill mob, which is this comedy about gangsters. Lavender Hill is an area of London in Battersea, and there really was a hill with lavender growing on in the 19th century before it got built over. So there's still a street called Lavender Hill. Um, uh, anyway, so he knew a lot of the uh, comedy greats of that era, era Bernard Breslau, for example, Alec Guinness, who wasn't solely a comic actor, of course. And then the Carry On films came, uh, came along, and that's what really made him a, a household name. So um, there was a series of films from the ooh, from the 50s to the 70s. Well, there's one even in about 1992, Carry On Columbus, showing you his house. It's obviously quite well off to have such a large and, and, and handsome house. Um, but better get out of the way because these guys are doing some work. Um, and so they're like Carry On Teacher, Carry On Camping, Carry On Up the Khyber. And they're full of ribaldry and a bit of slapstick. Um, so many double entendre and even that, that um, uh, title, Carrying Up the Kyber, is, is innuendo. Um, so I've got to go over there. Where did Safety go? Um, so, uh, what else about that? Because he, he spoke in a Cockney accent. Um, is uh, like a, a car the Cockney rhyming slang, Kyber Pass, means ass, as in your bottom or your anus. So, Carrying Up the Kyber sounds very rude. So, there are lots of jokes in there when one bloke says, um, how dare you break wind before my wife? And it was, it was um, Kenneth Williams. And to which his uh, character, to which Sir James's character replies, I didn't know it was her turn. Um, I can't remember these, this uh, bit of obsequious flattery, like say, uh, may things uh, always go up for you. And he, he replies, and up yours, or something like that. Anyway, so uh, he was um, on stage in Newcastle in 1976. And uh, he um, didn't respond to a line. 
and uh, the, the actress beside him uh, didn't know why and she had to extemporise this wasn't happening. The, she went off to the wings, the curtain came down and the audience was in gales of laughter thinking this was part of the skit. The comic actor, in fact, he died of a heart attack. So it's cremated at Golders Green Cemetery here in London, um, 1976. He was 62 years old. So he was a heavy drinker and smoker. Um, he was hooked on gambling and his wages were not very rational. So although he earned a lot of money, he lost a huge amount of money as well. Anyway, that is just a little bit about Sid James. Toodaloo.